I'm going to be introducing uh, Judy Bales. Building on 25 years experience as a fiber artist, sculptor, customer for modern dance, and bridge design team member, Judy creates art that is exciting and improbable marriage of a cold industrial materials and the, sens and the sensu sensuality of nature. Judy utilizes industrial materials, many of which are found, recycled, or salvaged in an ongoing effort to reveal beauty in unlikely places and stretch conventional notions of what constitutes art. The broad range of my work is clearly unified by a sensibility that asserts power of an artist to create beauty from anything and convey that simple but vital truth to an audience by, by manipulating materials in ways for context for which they were never intended, whether mangling the, pre the precise configuration of a plastic grid or turning a uh, demure a thrift shop dress into a cotton and steel uh, am amalgamation. Amalgamation, there we go. I, uh, I embrace creative transformation and a form of subversion that is alluring, whimsical, and nourishing to the imagination. That is a quote by Judy. Judy will pre be presenting on materials, inventions, form, the making of magic and fashion art. So thank you so much for asking me to be here. And full disclosure, I do not work totally in recycled materials. Um, I work in probably, I'd say maybe 80%. And I don't think of myself specifically as being an artist whose aim is to work in recycled materials. It's just that. I get attracted to materials and then I want to see what they do. And I think I realized recently, it kind of clarified in my mind um, why I as an artist am not able to, I don't set out to create an image in my mind. So I don't do a drawing and then set about to uh, create that drawing in 3D form. What motivates me is I see a material or a substance, and my curiosity prompts me to want to do something with it. My curiosity prompts me to wonder what would happen if I do something with that that maybe it's not supposed to do according to, to how it, uh, to its creation. So materials and then inventiveness, or I often speak in terms of improvisation. All of my work is improvisational um, by my definition in that it changes at each step. I'm, I'm using the materials and I'm finding some way of working with those materials. And then based on each step and what form comes from that, then the next step unfolds to me. And, and that, and I really don't like the word magic, but I used it in my title. But there is a kind of a, a, a magic that takes place between the material and the process and your intention. And it's, it's also could just be called the whole being more than the sum of the parts because you have these different elements. And then together they create something that can be quite extraordinary or it might not be. And there's always that chance. There's an especially when you work improvisationally or experimentally, there's always the chance that it's not going to make it, that you're just not, it's not going to fail. And in every project I ever do, there's a point where I've worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. And there's a point where I just think, I, I'm not, it's not going to work. I, I won't be able to make this to pull it off. And then I get over that, and I do in one form or another. Sometimes it's more successful than other ways, sometimes not. So OK, I should stop my introduction. So this, um, this is a, just an image of me working. This is aluminum wire. Uh, so a friend of mine, a jeweler friend who lives in St. Louis, had these huge spools of this wire. And she had thought that she would use them in her jewelry business, and then she did not. So she just gave them to me. And I still have a lot of this wire. So it was, I would call that a salvaged material. I didn't purchase it. Someone did purchase it, but then they were not using it, so they passed it on to me. Um, I don't have a picture of the spool, but it was just all tightly wound, absolutely perfect on this giant wooden spool. So what I decided to do was to to 
unroll it and then start mangling it and wadding it up and do it, again doing all the things that that it wasn't intended for and then taking those form or that uh, wadded up material you know and I did a lot of pulling and stretching and um, I kind of call it wire felting if you know what the felting process is with wool you kind of mesh it together. So I was doing that with the wire and then I created a form. So it was just this kind of circular thing of going from this linear material, uh, making it into this fluffy, meshy material and then solidifying that again into, into a form. And I did dresses out of that, which I'll show you. Um, this is me working on it and then this was a, a piece that was a site-specific installation in Tucson at the Botanical Gardens. Um, they had a, uh, it was a show about nest, and so it was a large, um, it was an installation that was up for about six months. Um, this is the very same material in a dress. Actually, I think I took that dress and I reformed it into that piece in the tree. Um, because I, I needed it, I, you know, and I often reform uh, the, the objects that I've made according to my needs, or if I don't think I'm going to show that particular work again, I just make something else out of it. Um, so, worn by a model, um, and this was, this particular fashion show was in Milledgeville, Georgia, at Georgia College, and two senior students, um, I was quite honored, they, uh, created, a, uh, they curated an entire exhibition of my work and they put on a fashion show. And uh, so they um, orchestrated the entire fashion show and it was really quite a nice, um, and I did a week-long residency. The top image shows that exhibition and that really shows how, um, it's the first time actually that I think certainly the first time in a solo show that I combined or that my fashion work and my sculptural work was combined. And the students did that. They combed my, res my um, website and they picked exactly what they wanted and then they installed it without me being there. I, I shipped it all there. And they did a beautiful job. And it was this real... Um, I love having other people install my work because that level of improvisation also shows me ways, um, ways of presenting my work or ways of seeing my work that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have if I just had this rigid idea of it's got to be, you know, it's got to be installed in exactly this way. So that's a great experience for me. And um, this is aluminum screen, like aluminum window screen. Um, I did purchase that but I could have also used discarded window screen. And I think the important thing for me speaking at this particular event is that it's not so much whether the materials are sustainable or not, but what's important is our, is our creativity, our ability to take any material and change that into a form that we want it to be. So it's more the mental practice, the creative practice that's important um, than the materials themselves. Certainly what I do with my materials in the whole scope of, of the earth is not that, doesn't matter that much if they happen to be recycled or not, but it's the, the creativity and that inventiveness and that um, exploration that that part of your your mind that's the important thing for for sustainability and window screen is a great example of that because you know window screen is about as flat and under, uninteresting as you can imagine um, you want to get it as flat and tight and without holes in it that's what its purpose is to keep insects and dust out so my immediate thought is, okay, cut it, twist it, you know, scrunch it. Do all the things that you would not do with aluminum screen according to what it's manufactured for. So it's just this creative process of doing, taking a material and doing something that, that you're not supposed to do with it. And um, then again, this, um, 
this is on the, or not that piece, but it's the same technique of twisting and making these kind of star shapes um, on a model. And I call this star flock. Um, it kind of represents that idea to me that of um, things in nature that, or some, an object that relates to many aspects of nature. It relates to stars, it relates to butterflies, it relates to flight of, of birds, it relates to water. So all these different things um, are alluded to in, in this particular piece. Um, these pieces are, are neck pieces that I, for some reason I just started thinking about Baroque uh, framing. And I have a gallery, Gilded Pear Gallery, in Cedar Rapids. And they said, and I asked them if they had, any, they're also a frame shop, and I asked them if they had any leftover uh, frame slices or pieces. And I was envisioning, you know, lengths like that from frames. And they said, yes, they did, that they have all these pieces that they, they are left over from their framing process. So I came up with my, little car and they were just you know many of the pieces were six feet long and very thick ornate frames and that was that was what they had to deal with in terms of recycling or discarding so that was a wonderful thing for me to receive um, and then I had Tim Freeberg who you may know in town a woodworker I had him slice them for me and drill through them so that I could use them as a very large bead element These are, um, uh, this garment, or it's more like a extreme jewelry, I called this series, I think, because it's like a, like a jewelry piece, but a little, a little bigger. Um, these are uh, zipper, zipper parts or zipper nylon from YKK in Georgia, um, in Milledgeville, Georgia, again, a company or a residency that I did there some years ago. And we partnered with YKK, and they're a very green, they're um, in Japan and then uh, US also. And they're a very, they try to be a very green company. And they gave me access to, so they recycle all of their leftover uh, metal and uh, plastics and whatever's used in their zippers, they do try to recycle that. And they gave me access to, uh, to any of those things. And, so this is, you can kind of see, it's like one part, one side of the zipper, so you can kind of see the teeth. And then that comes to me as just this, you know, it looks like something out of the ocean, just all these, you know, eel-like, I mean, just this huge amount of this material. And again, so different from a zipper. I'm not wearing a zipper now, but we all, you know, we all wear zippers and we think of them as being a very specific kind of object. So this was an exploration of working with that again differently um, and what it will do is very slippery because it was nylon. Uh, if it had been metal zipper parts, that would have been different. But the nylon was, uh, it, it, I couldn't keep a real strong knot. So it, it was very loosely knotted as you can see. So this is this piece, um, and of these, of these four pieces that are up here, this is, sorry, this is the only one that um, is actually not salvaged or recycled materials. Um, and what that material is, is these, I'm sure almost all of you have them in your shower, they're these kind of scrunchies that are, and they're like loofahs, they're like plastic loofahs. And at one point, I thought, that's bound by a, by a cord. What if I cut that? And I snipped it, and it was just like, you know, this, it, this just amazing kind of length of, of this gorgeous plastic, but gorgeous material, um, you know, just fell out. And it's about, it's much, much longer than you see these. And then I would look at it and I think, well, what do I do with this? And I realized that it's just so fragile, you know, so that I could, I, I could just make these very 
uh, soft and fluffy elements. So I decided, well, you know, I could have woven with it. I could have, um, there's a variety of things I could do with it. And I'm sure many of you here that are students or who are art students or artists would probably do something far different and probably far more creative than I did. But I just decided to do this very um, ocean looking, this very, very watery piece out of that. And then that, that's um, the, the image on the right, on the left is at Omaha Fashion Week, which has been a, a, a venue I've been doing for, I guess since 2015. And that's always, it's a great experience to go over there and show my work that way. Um, this is also one of my models that I worked with in Omaha. These materials are a friend who's diabetic gave me, um, I don't even know if they use these anymore, but they, I think they either, these little containers either kept, either contained her needles or her insulin, I'm not sure what, but anyway, they were, they're these fine um, aluminum uh, objects, and she just had hundreds of them, probably, yeah, a lot of them, because she would discard them every time she used them up, so she gave them to me. Um, and there's really a mixed, you know, I love, people are always offering me materials, which is wonderful. But of course, I think this is so great, but it would be even greater if they didn't have to have this surplus and offer it to an artist, because how much can an artist do? You know, so again, it's back to the, to the thought process. How are we going to make you know, how are we, as we go forward, how are we going to make all these medical supplies, all, just all of the things we use in our world, how are we going to make them so that they're sustainable in some way, biodegradable or, re, you know, recyclable in a different way or very easy for people to recycle, whatever. And that's, um, you know, that's certainly what I think the younger generation, it's, they are the ones that are really, um, that hold this in your hands. You know, your creativity will be what brings about these solutions. So this is um, this piece, and again, this is plastic bags. Um, I could make, I could make a artwork the size of you know, this building out of plastic bags, and there'd still be some in my kitchen, even though I try to take bags to the store all the time. Um, it's like, I, I honestly don't know how they all accumulate when I try so hard uh, not to use plastic. Um, and making a little garment out of plastic bags isn't really doing anything <laughs> for the environment. It's just keeping a few more out of the ocean. But what we really have to do is find a way of not, um, not creating plastic, having something else. Um, but this was, um, again, it's, it's, it's using a material that, and this technique is a little, my techniques are all just absolutely simple, you know, that I don't do anything complicated. And that's part of what I love about the process is seeing what you can do both with an, an unusual material or a non-traditional material and then also what you can do with just a very, very simple technique. And this is kind of the technique that they, uh, they used to use in high school homecoming floats, you know, where you have chicken wire or other kind of mesh and you poke a material through it. And, and so it's just quite a simple technique. Uh, it's also just like tufting or, or a, that's also used in very fine carpets and rugs, um, raya rugs. So it's, it's kind of a standard simple technique that can create a, a you know, quite beautiful effects and then, and then enhanced with aerosol paints, you know, there's many things that, that take paint, um, which can absolutely transform. I need to keep an eye on my time. How is my time? Five of speaking or, or the whole presentation? Okay. Um, 
Okay, so these are, this was a wonderful find for me because I, I um, showed my work in Omaha and one of my model's moms worked for a, a recycle company. And she wrote me and she said, I have this, this, um, this mesh. It's, it's, she said it was some kind of roofing mesh. I can only imagine that, it, that it's layered in, uh, in a roof to uh, create drainage. But she sent me this huge roll of it um, and I created a whole, uh, one of my whole shows at Omaha, my whole, my entire line was created from that material and uh, enhanced by painting. And these have really traveled a lot and been shown a lot. And they were put together just by cutting and with uh, very thin zip ties. And uh, it's, it's pretty wonderful because this material will fold and they're very, very easy to ship. And so I just can fold them up and kind of crunch them into a box ship them and then I have to tell the, the, the person at the gallery or the museum to let them lay flat for about a day so that the, which I did not do for these, so that some of these kind of uh, dents that come from folding it up will, will kind of, that memory will even out and it works great. Uh, these are just a few examples of different uh, flash, fashion lines that I've shown at Omaha. This is a view of a few of the models that were walking in these in these garments. And then an ending slide is um, this. This is some of my very recent work, and the these two pieces are standard fabrics. They were velours and satin, so they were just standard fabrics, not unusual fabrics. Um, but this is back to my uh, fencing that I, I use a lot, that I've used for many years, and fabric that was, uh, it was either thrift store fabric or fabric that was passed down to me from friends. So um, kind of like reclaimed fabric that I, I uh, cut into strips and wrap, rather laboriously wrap this uh, fencing and it creates this kind of fuzzy kind of, again, it's, it's seeing what will happen if I, if I make that fabric into strips and then, you know, whereas you're usually using fabric in a very flat way. So see what happens if you do something completely different with it. And that's the end of my show. So. Yeah. So I hope I, I may not have left any time for questions, but if there, okay, yeah, yes. Um, I have to compliment you on how good your artistic sense is. Uh, both my wife and I, she gets lots of catalogs of fashion, and in the last four or five years, so much of it is so awful looking, it's just no sense of artistic proportion and pattern at all. It's just, it's nauseating, most of it. But your stuff was bold, bright, innovative, and creative, and it was still artistic, still appealing. So I just wanted to compliment you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. It's been really interesting. Um, I, as I mentioned, I've shown in Omaha at Omaha Fashion Week for I, 10 times now, which I've just kind of gotten addicted to it. But it is very interesting. So I, the first show I did was in 2015, and watching the the evolution um, of the different fashion of the different lines that come out is quite um, it's quite interesting. And it's it is I mean some of it I love. Um, I mean I'm just so jealous of, or envious I should say not jealous of some people that just create these just jaw dropping pieces. Other pieces, I, th I think, gosh, these are not, you know, I just don't like them. But that's, that's really the case with any exhibition. And, but one of the most interesting things that's happened over the years, which is wonderful, is that it's gone from in 2015 when the models had to be minimum five foot seven, under 27 years old, all these criteria. 
And now, weight, gender, height, any of it, and all of the, all of the um, restrictions are just out the window, and it's very, very inclusive. And that's happened just in 10 years. And um, that's just kind of an, an aside, but it's been really remarkable to me to watch that and to see how the fashion world is just embracing um, no longer, you know, that our standard of what a model has to be, and also it, it does open up our standards of what fashion is, you know, which can be to our like or not to our like, but um, there's some wonderful work being done out, out there, you know, that, uh, anyway, yeah, thank you for that compliment. Thank you, Yes. Judy. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.